I appreciate Brother Lemons. He tells a joke before he gets started so he can loosen everybody up a little bit. But uh, last time I was up here, I, I told a joke and about halfway through my message, uh, some guy laughed. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, So, uh, maybe I will tell you one. Uh, <laughs> this is, uh, I, you know, I laughed about anything, but uh, there was two snakes one time, and it was a mother snake and a little baby snake, and the baby snake asked the mother snake, uh, said, are we poisonous snakes, uh, mother? And mother said, oh, yes, son, we're very poisoned. And she said, why do you ask? And the baby snake said, I just bit my tongue. (laughs) (laughs) So, (laughs) uh, if you... (laughs) <laughs> if you can figure that one out, why it'd be great. I I heard uh, Brother Ed preach this morning real early, and he he did a super job. You know, he got through in probably twenty five minutes. So I'm going to have to slow down. Or you guys will be early to lunch. <laughs> uh, sometimes it, somebody asks me, do you do anything fast? And I said, yeah, oh yeah, I do a lot of things fast. I get tarred fast. <laughs> so you all remember that. My subject today is resurrection, fact or fable. And let me tell you this, if it's a fable, we've got problems. Uh, In fact, if there's no resurrection, really and truly, we have no hope at all. Over in the book of Job, like Brother Richard was talking about, evidently uh, Job, uh, Job knew about the resurrection. In fact, in Job 14, 14, if you'd like to look at that one, Job asked a question. If a man die, shall he live again? Now, that's the question Job wanted to know. He wanted to know, was he going to live again? And he gives an answer here. All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. So Job was going to wait till his change comes. He knew he was going to be changed one day. And he was waiting for that change. And then later on, uh, Job tells us in in Job 19.25, he tells us what kind of change is going to be made. And Job knows that one day he's going to be changed. Now, by the way, I, I've been waiting for that change too. You know, some people think they're going to be raised out of the grave in a body like they had. Boy, I'm so thankful that's not me. <laughs> I'd hate to live forever in this thing. <laughs> but I thank God we're going to be changed one day. And Job knew that. Okay? In Job 19.25, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter days upon the earth, 
And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Well, what's that tell you right there that Job knew? By the way, when you read, compare some verses I'm going to use here in just a moment uh, with John chapter 3 and verse 5, you can understand the issue about being born again. Now, to be born again, in other words, for Job to see God in his flesh, what had to happen to him? Well, he had to be born again, did he not? Sure he did. And Job was a member of the nation of Israel, even though it was before the nation started. And Job was a son of Eskar, the fifth son of Jacob. So Job knew one day that he was going to see God in the flesh. Now we know that his body laid in the grave all these years. The body did. And the only way for that to happen is that you have to have a resurrection. And one day Job is going to be resurrected in a natural body. I believe that. If you don't see the difference in the body that Israel's going to have one day to inherit the earth and the body that we're going to receive one day to inherit the heavens, we need to look at this because it's going to be different. Okay, look at Ezekiel. And in Ezekiel chapter 36, kind of gives the answer to the issue that's raised in John chapter 5. Or John chapter 3, excuse me, verse 5. But in Ezekiel 36, 25, we read that then will I sprinkle clear water upon you. See, there's the water that's mentioned over there in John chapter 3. There's the water. What else is mentioned over there? The Spirit's mentioned. Look what else Ezekiel says. And you shall be cleansed from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. And a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within, and a new spirit will I. Well, I can't fill on nothing no more. Will I put within you, and I will take away your stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. That's a blood pumping heart, by the way, and that's what. Ezekiel's talking about. He's talking about the nation of Israel one day being raised in a na- in a natural body. Turn back over to Ezekiel thirty-seven. Ezekiel thirty-seven, and and Ezekiel tells you. He tells you who those who those bodies that's going to come together is going to be. Now we all, we all hear this song, Them Bones Are Going to Rise Again. We used to sing that all the time. Well, when I sang that, I always got the wrong bone with the wrong thing. <laughs> but those bones are going to come together. And in Ezekiel 37, we see... Verse 11, Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Very plain who these bones are. And who's going to inherit the earth? They are going to inherit the earth in a natural body. By the way, if you use a little common sense, it makes sense to me that if you live on the earth, you have to live in a natural body. If you live in the heavens, 
You have to live in a heavenly body. So that's exactly what's going to happen. You've got two promises in your Bible, one to the church and one to Israel. And Job knew that he was going to be born to be. And he was going to live on this earth in a natural body. You know, Daniel, when you come to the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2, we see that Daniel also knew there was going to be two resurrections. So look at Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2. And many of them slept, sleep in the dust of the earth, shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So Daniel tells us not only God's people is going to be resurrected, but he also tells us that the ones that are in hell is going to be resurrected and judged. Remember this, everybody, regardless where you're in the body of Christ or Israel or whatever, there is coming a judgment day. And as a body of Christ, we're going to, to give an account of ourselves, what's done in the body, where it be good or bad. The people in hell are going to be brought up and they're going to be judged. Look at Revelation chapter 20 and verse 13. Here's the resurrection of the lost. And the sea give up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Verse 14, and death and hell was cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So there's the two resurrections that Daniel's talking about. One day that's going to happen. Now you come to what Jesus tells us, and you look at John chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus says here in John eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. There's a resurrection Jesus is talking about. He, he taught the resurrection because he was the resurrection. In Matthew 22 and verse 31, Jesus here says, But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham? And the, and the God of, of Isaac and God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. So we see very plainly as we go through the scripture that one day there is going to be a resurrection. Is it true or fable? Well, it is definitely true. If we believe God's word, then you can find the resurrection all the way through it. And we know that one day that's going to happen, the resurrection. In Acts chapter 1, in verse number 3, To whom also he, 
he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So forty days, he's back on the earth and he's showing himself to the people, the apostles, and he is preaching to them and teaching them about the kingdom of God. So we have the resurrection of Jesus. We have him appearing to many people. And then the most proof of the resurrection is simply a a eyewitness, you know, to go to court. And I hear this mentioned before, at the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word will be established. So here you've got many people seeing him and him teaching the apostles this. So the best evidence of the resurrection, of course, is what? The eyewitness account of those that saw him after he rose from the grave. In 1 Corinthians, now we're going to see what Paul tells us about the resurrection. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, of course, this chapter in the Bible is talking about uh, not only that, but it's talking about the change that's going to be made in us. I want to start out here in 1 Corinthians 15. I want to read verse 5. And he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of about 500 brethren at once. And of whom the greater, the greater part remains unto this present, but some are falling asleep. So here you've got the 12, you've got 500, and then verse 7, and after that, he was seen of James, then of the apostles, but look at verse 8, Paul's eyewitness account. And last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due season, due time. Paul saw him. He appeared to him. Paul knew there was a resurrection. And that's what he's talking about here in, in chapter 15. Look down at verse 16. Of the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? He's asking the question. Is Christ not raised? If the dead rise not? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain and you are in your sins. Think about that. If there's no resurrection, you are still in your sins. And you have no hope at all. That's where you're at if there's no resurrection. This is, you've got to remember this, that the resurrection is part of the gospel that you have to believe to be saved. It's part of that gospel. Let me go on here. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we of all men most miserable. If you do not have a hope of the resurrection or a hope of eternal life, then the only thing that you believe in or trust in is Christ while you're alive, you are most miserable. And can I tell you something else? You're wasting your time by coming up here. 
because there's no hope. You're just out there. You're most miserable. You know, we come up here once a year, and what happens? <coughs> and what happens? We hear, and we are taught, and we believe the gospel. We believe that we're going to get a glorified body one day. And without that hope, we have nothing, nothing at all. And if Christ be not risen, your faith is vain. It has no meaning at all. You have no hope. And not only that, Verse 18, then they also which are falling asleep in Christ are cursed. In other words, the dead, they done disappeared off the face of the earth. They have no, no meaning whatsoever. They just like a dead dog. No hope at all. And that's where without that resurrection. Verse 22, here's the answer to the whole thing. For as Adam all died by one man, sin in the world and death by sin <coughs> passed upon all men because all have sinned. In Adam, you're going to die because you're a sinner. You have no hope at all. In Adam. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. How about that? Ain't that some good news, people? That's some good news. Verse 23, But every man in his own order, there's an order to this. Christ the first fruit, and after they that are Christ at his, his coming. So there is an order to the resurrection. And here's the big answer, the big question that people have today. Look down at They want to know what kind of body they're going to have. In the resurrection, what kind of body are you going to get? That's what they want to know. Some people want to ride a white horseback. You know, that's a big teaching of the Baptist church. I talk to people all the time about that. And some of them I tell they're going to have to have a Clydesdale. (laughs) Or they ain't going to make it back. Well, I've always been of the opinion you you answer an idiot with a whatever question you can come up with. <laughs> you know, and I, I used to believe that. That's what I was taught when I was going to the Baptist church. And you know what? If I had never picked up my Bible and if I had never read it for myself, I wouldn't have known. That's still been out there. And you would have too. All that stuff is taught. If you don't check it out yourself, how in the world do you know? I mean, I can listen to preachers and, you know, you can believe preachers if you want to. Some of them will tell you, I hate to tell you this, but some of them will tell you uh, some non-truths. You need to check every preacher out and see if that's what the book says. You really do. Verse 35. But some men will say, how how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Verse 36. Thy fool. 
You know, there's another verse in the Bible over in Psalms that says, Thy fool has said in his heart there is no God. Here's another fool. That which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. So you're not going to get that change unless you die. You're not going to be changed here. You're just going to get old and finally just fade away. I was telling him this morning about what MacArthur said. I know you guys are not old enough to remember that, but he said, old soldiers never die. They just fade away. And that's really what happens to us. We just fade away. And eventually we go to the grave if the Lord don't appear in the sky to call us out. And that's really what happens. So let's look at what kind of bodies they are. Verse 40 of First Corinthians 15. There are celestial bodies. Talking about a heavenly body. There's two kinds of bodies. Bodies terrestrial, that's earthly. But the glory of celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Two different glories, two different types of bodies. Look over at verse 44. It is sown in natural body. There's a dead body. That's how it's sown. It's sown in the ground, a natural body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. It is sown in a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. That's how it's raised. It's not raised like it was. It's raised a spiritual body. And what we're going to get at the rapture of the church is a glorified body. The Philippians 3.21 says that we're going to get one fashion like his glorious body. Everybody goes around thinking, oh, am I going to have holes in my hand and holes in my side? You ever hear that? I have. Well, no, I when I read Revelation chapter 1, I see God Almighty. That's what he's going to look like when John saw him. He didn't run up and hug his neck, by the way. He fell to the ground like he was dead. That's what John did. But Jesus Christ, when he comes back to the earth, he's going to be God Almighty. You know, he's not... He's not in that natural body no more. So what kind of body are we going to get? We're going to get a glorified body. What kind of body is Israel going to get? They're going to get a natural body. The only way they can live on the earth is to have that natural body. They can't live on the earth in the spiritual body. We can't live in the heavens in the natural body. Same thing applies. Verse 49. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Do you see that? Right now, you're in a natural body. You got the image of the earthly. That's what you made up of. You made up of the earth. But one day you're going to get a different body. So, there we have the resurrection. We have the different kind of bodies we're going to get, different, how God's dealing with us differently and he's dealing with the nation. And when he comes back the second time, at the second coming, Israel's going to be born again, I believe that. And they're going to inherit the earth. When he appears in the sky at the rapture and calls us up, 
we're going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. That's what we're going to get at that time. Think about that. That's the resurrection. That's where we're at, and that's what we're looking forward to. So without the resurrection, think about this, Romans 4.25. Look what happens because of the resurrection. It was not enough that Christ died for your sins. He died for your sins. That's great. He did that. But the next part of the gospel is that he was buried. See, that that one part of the gospel was that he was buried. He was taken out of our sight. But without the resurrection, it didn't it would have done no good whatsoever. I can't die for you and do you any good at all. Wouldn't benefit you a bit. But by him dying for your sins, and the third day he rose again from the grave, what for? Romans four twenty five, who was delivered for our offenses. There's the sins he was delivered for. And he was raised for our justification. Without the resurrection, you cannot stand justified before God. So my whole message is simply this. We have hope in one thing. And that is that one day we're going to be changed we're going to, and if we pass away before that appearing, one day we're going to be raised up and give a different body, and we're going to be changed. Okay, thank you very much. Let's pray, and I'll get off of here. Father, again, we come to you thanking you, Lord, for what you've done, thanking you for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you, Lord, for coming out of that that grave on the third day so we can stand just before you. Pray, Lord, that that this message will go out into the world and people might believe and, and be saved today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.